Here's why I think the golf ball rollback will hurt shorter hitters more than it will the longer ones. And considering the main reason this change is being made is to protect the game's future, let me explain why the longer hitters will get very much around it, as the longer hitters are very much gonna take advantage of this, and the shorter, less adaptable golfers in our game, well, let's be honest, be the ones that will be losing out. And considering this whole thing is about stopping elite golfers hitting the ball so far off the tee, it's supposed to not hurt the iron, supposed to not hurt the wedges, it's purely tee shots, I've got a much simpler rule that could solve all of this and not affect the golf ball one bit. I thought the graphic from the USGA was rather misleading, especially when it comes to showing longer hitters will get punished more and the majority of golfers that they're saying at the amateur level, slower club head speed, won't see that much difference. Well, I don't really think that's true. And my argument is very much this. If we look at the new current standard testing rates that will be going in for ball comparisons, i.e. manufacturers will have to have their ball tested at 125 miles an hour with a launch angle of 11 and a spin rate at 2,200 and that ball won't be able to exceed 317 yards total distance with three yards tolerance. So it can't go further than 320, meaning they're gonna have to change the ballistics of the ball or make it basically not come off the face faster, which, which to be honest is going to be the easier solution. My biggest point of all of this is launch and spin is everything when it comes down to distance. I saw some track man data of John Rahm's swing on the internet, swinging his driver at 117, getting almost 350 yards. Why? Because he was actually launching the ball high and the spin was around 1600. The swing that I hit at the start of this video, I only swung 108. But again, you can see my launch was very much higher, 13 degrees. My spin rate was 2,200, meaning I nearly got 307 yards. And that's being hit with the Vise Pro Plus, which I'm gaming at the moment. And just like every other golf ball would have had to go through that old test, which was 120 miles an hour, 2,500 spin, and wouldn't be able to exceed that 320 yard goal. But as I'll prove now, swinging very much under that 120 mile an hour goal. 300 yards carry. Oh, we broke the 320 barrier. At 118 miles an hour, I was still able to get 321. So imagine I swung at 120, dropped that spin because actually that's a bit high. Let's say you get down to the 2200. I mean, that's gonna go another 15 yards further. The biggest downside is longer hitters are gonna be more adaptable. They're going to be able to drop their spin, increase that launch. I mean, it's very evident as the testing conditions have changed from 10 degrees and two and a half spin to now the new one being 11 degrees down to 2200. As the RNA and USGA know exactly what these guys are doing. Bryson's a classic example of this, taking the game to another level, increasing his club head speed, increasing his ball speed, using very low lofted drivers and hitting up through the ball so that he can get drives that go 370 yards. However, for the slower hitter that already spins his driver at 2000, at 90 miles an hour, 85 miles an hour, where does he go? Are we gonna have to lengthen everyone's driver shaft to 48 inches? Are we gonna have to tee the ball up that much higher trying to get our angler attack to be, well, six degrees up and rather than using his comfortable 12 degree driver, is he having to now learn to hit a knuckleball with a 10 degree driver? The point is all these pros on tour could easily hit their driver 350 yards, 360 yards, but they choose not to because, well, let's be honest, it's not consistent. I can hit the ball a long way, but try and get me to find a fairway, that's a different matter. And to be honest, up until this point, them hitting those cut stock fades that spin a bit more, launch a bit lower, that still go 330 down the fairway has well been more than enough. However, if they know the rest of the field that already max out their draws that only go 300 yards, 310, and now that they can be almost 40 yards past everyone else because they haven't even touched that side of their technique, well surely we're going to see even more advantage to those longer hitters, especially on tour. Another few things that I found fascinating in this is that 30% of golf balls 
out on the market already will be complying. So I'd love to know the list of golf balls that people are currently buying and using that, and no one's even knowing about it. Not to mention a one yard gap for myself that hits the ball 300 yards off the tee is going to be a lot less punishing than someone that only hits it 180. A graph that doesn't really make any sense or comparable is that if you gave me a gap wedge from 90 yards, or let's say a knockdown pitching wedge, from 110. For me, yes, I've lost distance off the tee, but to be honest, I'm just as accurate with a gap wedge as I would be with a knockdown pitching wedge. However, you take that amateur golfer that normally has a driver six iron into the flag or driver seven iron, and all of a sudden they're now having to play a longer iron or even let's say a hybrid. I mean, let's be honest, Who's really being punished more? Now, obviously, this rule isn't supposed to be coming to effect until 2030 for a lot of us. And also, I'll explain the catastrophes this is going to create in the golf industry, especially when the new balls are implemented, and then in 2030, will start having to be used. The interesting thing about all of this is that golf balls are very much going to be bolt bought before 2027 because amateurs are going to be able to use it. And again, if you get more distance off the tee for that three year period, well, kind of makes sense to do it, which is a perfect opportunity to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Vice Golf. Their mix and match promotions on their website for your friends or family as a gift option leading up to Christmas, logos, personalizations, and you can buy different sets of balls and take advantage of their dozen pricing system. So don't feel like you have to buy the same model to take advantage as you can buy different varieties and still get the same discount. They also have a great golf gift guide. So if you want your partner to go on the website, type in a certain budget, obviously they'd be able to help recommend that person. So you might have a surprise at Christmas too. I'll leave a link in the description down below and let me tell you why golf manufacturers and club fitting is going to be a nightmare in the next three years. Imagine it's the year 2027. The brand new Titleist, the brand new Callaway, the brand new Srixen, Mizuno, whatever driver comes out and you're going for your fitting. And they ask you, do you want to be fitted for the new ball or do you want to be fitted for the old ball which you can currently use for the next three years? Which I find fascinating as let's be honest, now more than ever when it comes to driver fitting is this going to be, have to be pushed to the ultimate maximum. And again, considering this is to stop the best golfers in the world on tour that play in hot countries, or at least in the country when it is warm, the air is less dense, the ground is firmer, the ball is going to roll further. So 340, 350 yard drives are achievable on that tournament week in that hot country. However, I live in a country where it's raining 10 months of the year. In this year's case, 11 months of the year. Meaning that if you carry the ball to 20, you've ultimately got a total distance of 224 yards. So Simon, what would be the solution stopping the longest hitters in the world hitting the ball still 360 yards in 2029, 2030, as that's still going to be the news headlines? Well, it's to do with that little number at the bottom of this driver. The whole point of this argument at the start when this actually got announced is that everyone in the world wanted to play with the same equipment as the pros. If the pros are using a different ball, we want to use a different ball. Ultimately, none of us wanted the ball to change anyway. And for 98% of the public, using a 10 and a half degree driver, if not more loft, well, actually would suit us. However, as you can see in my hands, that 12 degree driver, which I did catch a bit out the hill, Virtually the same launch numbers as I had at the start, seven miles an hour faster than that 300 yard drive that I had at the start. But look at my spin rate, very high. Meaning, guess what? The ball went absolutely nowhere. The longest hitters in our game use seven and a half degree drivers. Bryson's using a six degree driver. McRoy, 7.5, albeit nine degrees lofted down. The point is they're using the same technology, the same balls, everything else, but 
If the USGA and RNA had rules in tournament play, considering they wanted a pros only golf ball, why not just make a rule that every driver has to be 10 and a half degrees? That spin will naturally increase and naturally the ball won't go as far because I can guarantee you, no matter how slow you make the ball or how more spinny you make it, it's just gonna force these guys to go longer shaft, less lofted drivers. Because there's a lot of money on the line, a lot of majors to win. And if some of these guys can hit it 40 yards past the other players because they haven't got the club edge speed to even get a five degree driver in the air, well, let's be honest, that's exactly what they're going to do. Guys, if you've got any questions during your golf bag or equipment, sasgolfacademy.com. Catch you in the next one.